Welcome to our lecture online. Now the third problem on the 2021 set of the JE Advanced Questions on Physics, it's a real problem. It's a very difficult problem and anybody would be hard pressed to do this in three minutes. Let me show you why. All right, it deals with a prism and the minimum deviation. For a prism of prism angle, theta equals 60 degrees, the, ref the refractive indices of the left and half and the right half are respectively n1 and n2, where n2 is greater than or equal to n1, as shown in the figure. The angle of incidence i is chosen such that the incident light rays will have a minimum deviation if n1 equals n2 equals 1.5. For the case of unequal refractive indices, n1 equals n, and n2 equals n plus some small delta n, where delta n is much, much smaller than n. The angle of emergence, E, is I plus delta E. Which of the following statements or statements are correct? And there's four possible statements. Let's find out which of those four are correct. Now, what do we know about the prism and the minimum deviation? Well, normally, when n1 and n2 are the same, and that's what we are going to assume initially, being equal to 1.5, what happens is this incident ray will refract, it will go straight across, parallel to the base, and then at this point, it will refract again, like this, and the angle of emergence will equal the angle of incidence, and that's what will give you what we call the minimum angle deviation, which is this angle right here. Let's call this phi, and that will be a minimum under those conditions. So that's what we need to know. So what happens when n1 and n2 are not equal to each other, and let's say that n2 is slightly bigger than n1, how does that change the angle of deviation, or the angle of emergence, I should say? That pitter-patter is the dog running past us, by the way. All right. So in order to figure out what we need to do here, we probably want to start with the following. We probably want to start with the Snell's Law, where we have n1 sine of theta1 equals n2 sine of theta2. And of course, what we want to do is we want to concentrate on this portion of the, of the prism right there. So in this case, what we can say here is we can change this to n2 sine of theta1. Now, um, I should say theta2. Sorry, theta2. So notice on this particular uh, prism where this is a 60 degree angle, the angle of incidence on this boundary is going to be 30 degrees. So essentially, we can replace theta2 with 30 degrees. And that's going to be equal n2. Of course, n2 on the outside is going to be equal to 1, because that's air again, times the sine of theta sub 2, or theta on the outside. And maybe I'll just call it angle of emergence, like that. So that is the relationship that we have between the ray coming from within to the ray going outside the prism at this location right there. Now, they want to know if the value of the change in E in radians is greater than the change in N. And they also want to know if this is proportional to that. All right, so how do we deal with that? How do we figure this out? Well, let's see here. First of all, if N2 is sine of 30 right there, and we want to find E, so I'm going to calculate this, I'm going to say E is equal to um, N2, let's set N2 equal to 1.5, so we have the inverse sine then of 1.5 times the sine of 30, which is 0 0.5. And so we have E is equal to the inverse sine of, uh, that would be 0 0.75. And the sine of the inverse sine of 0 0.75, well, remember, 45 degrees would be 0 0.707, and 60 degrees is 0 0.866. So this is somewhere in the high 40 degrees, between like 48, 49, 50 degrees, something like that. Okay, so that makes E approximately equal to about 50 degrees. All right, 
Not that that's helping us much, much but it gives us some sort of idea of what we're dealing with here. Now, how does it affect if I want to calculate this for a small change in in, in n? So what I, what I can do is I can say that a small change in n times the sine of 30 degrees is going to be equal to a ch small change in this. I'm going to take the differential of that, and the dif differential of sine is going to be the cosine of e, and of course then I have to multiply it times the change in e, so that would be times the delta e, like this. And now, what I can do is I can now have delta e expressed in terms of delta n and the sine of 30. So I can say that delta e is equal to delta n times the sine of 30, which is 1 half, divided by the cosine of e. Hmm. So how do I find the cosine of e? Well, we can use this equation right here. We can say that the sine square of theta plus the cosine square of theta is equal to 1. And I know that the sine of theta, so in this case, we're going to replace theta by the angle E like this. And we already know that E is going to be the inverse sine of 0.75, which is 3 quarters. So that means that this would be equal to 3 quarters squared plus, let's call this x squared, is equal to 1. So I can now solve for the cosine of E by solving for this. So I know that x is equal to the square root of 1 minus the square root, the square of this over that, which would be 9 over 16. That would be 16 over 16 minus 9 over 16, which is equal to the square root of 7 over 16, which is equal to the square root of 7 over 4. So now I can go ahead and plug that in there. So this is equal to 1 half times delta n divided by the cosine of e, which is equal to the square root of 7 over 4, and bringing this up here, that becomes 2 times delta n over the square root of 7. So in other words, the change in e is going to be equal to 2 times the change in the n, which is uh, the index of refraction, divided by the square root of 7. All right. So now I think we can already begin to answer some of these questions. First of all, is there some proportionality between the change in E and the change in N? We can see here, yes, the constant of proportionality would be 2 over the square root of 7. So we can say that, yes, B is a correct statement. Now, can we say that the change in E is greater than the change in N? Now, let's see here. The square root of 7 is bigger than 2. So this fraction here is less than 1. That means that this is smaller than delta n. And that makes A incorrect. So A is an incorrect statement. All right. So now we still have to answer C and D. So delta E lies between 2 and 3 milliradians if delta n is 2.8 times 10 to the minus 3. Or it lies between 1 and 1.6 milliradians for the cha same change in n. So, so, okay, well, I guess what we need to do is we need to plug in the number 2.8 times 10 to the minus 3. So this, so now we can say that delta E is going to be equal to 2 times 2.8 times 10 to the minus 3, and we're going to divide that by the square root of 7. This is where you really want the calculator. I'm dying for a calculator, but hey, let's see if we can come up with something without a calculator. What is the square root of 7? So two numbers multiplied together, get it, give me 7. How about uh, 2.5 squared is equal to 6.25. So uh, I know that 3 squared is equal to 9. So that means about 2.7. So the square root of 7 is approximately equal to 2.7. So 2.8 divided by 2.7 is about 1. That gives me about, uh, so a little bit, well, it should be a little bit more than 1, times 2. So this is approximately about 2.2 times 10 to the minus 3. Again, approximations are good here because I don't have a calculator. And notice that... Um, that this falls within this limit and not between those two numbers. Clearly closer to this than this. So that means that this would be an incorrect statement and then C would be a correct statement. Wow. Can you do this in three minutes or less? 
Well, first of all, it might take you 30 minutes to figure out how to even do this problem. <laughs> I didn't catch on this quickly. I had to really think about how to go about doing this. But first, what we need to do is realize what we mean by the, when we have the minimum deviation, and that is when the ray coming in will then be refracted where the refractor ray is parallel to the base and then gets refracted outside where these two angles are equal to each other. And then we first take the example where n is equal to 1.5 and if it's equal to 1.5 we can find the angle of emission or emittance which is about a 50 degree angle. Not that we need to know that but it's close to that. And then we have to realize that we can then solve this equation for a small change in n but of course then we need to take the derivative of the right side. This is just a constant, right? This, this will be the variable. That becomes delta n. This is the constant. And then we have to calculate the derivative of that or the differential of that. That allows us to figure out delta e in terms of delta n. Once we have that relationship, we can answer the first two questions. And then we can use that relationship to answer the last two questions. So yes, that's how we can go about doing this problem. But it doesn't come easy. And yeah, um, I can see where you wouldn't get this one in three minutes unless you can kind of think about how to do it like that. And that is how it's done.